Hello everybody, is learning to code pointless? There's a lot of people coming out and saying you shouldn't learn to code, but is it true? The short answer, no. You should still learn to code if that's something you wanna do. The most important part, if that's something you enjoy and something you're passionate about, you shouldn't let others tell you to stop doing those things. If you're worried if AI is gonna take your job, that's the wrong way to think about things. Also, you could check out a great video that I'll put in the pinned comment from WebDev Cody, where he talked about his opinion. Well, I'm gonna give you mine, and I think learning to code will still benefit you even if AI keeps getting better. Thinking about this, if I were to kinda super proof myself for the future, what would I do? And I would either do work with my hands or things like plumbing, mechanic, personal trainer, something where you work with people or work with your hands to fix things, or I would still learn to code. And the reason why is because coding will give you the superpower to take advantage of all the AI tools that are coming out. There's so many different AI tools and ways to implement them that are coming out that are helping you from knowing how to code to build things faster, or you could stitch together different services to solve business problems or create your own app. And People that don't know how to do that because they don't understand code are already going to be in a disadvantage. If you take a look at somebody who's not a programmer that speaks the technical language, they're literally a couple of layers away of abstractions. They don't understand what is kind of happening under the hood. And we don't have to understand everything, but we do need to understand what good code looks like so we could take advantage of it. And when I see myself moving towards the future, I'm 45 years old. I transitioned into tech at 39. It took me a long time to get my first job. I got started as a content manager, managing content on WordPress sites. Then as I continued to learn HTML and CSS and PHP, I started building WordPress themes. Then I transitioned into building application with React. And my first real tech job I got, I was working on building applications with React on the front end and learning C Sharp, ASP.NET, because that what the backend was built. Then I moved from that job to working for a financial company, working on a React front end. And then afterwards, I left software engineering. Well, I'm technically still in software engineering, but I do developer relationships at a company called Strapi. I pivoted because that's something I really enjoyed. I love the technical aspects of it and I love the coding aspects of it. And my next step is to continue to evolve and maybe become developer relationship manager where I manage other people to continue to do the work that I'm doing. Maybe one day, and something I already started, is thinking of what would I do if I were to start my own agency? And the reason why I mentioned this this transition through my career path of all the different things that I did. And there's many other adjacent fields where programming is a key part of the thing that you do. So by knowing programming, you don't just have to be a software engineer. There's so many other things you could do. And I want you to remember that. And if you're not a programmer, you're going to miss out on being able to take advantage of all the AI tools and everything that's coming out. So if you're a lay person, meaning you don't know how to code, taking advantage of the AI system is going to be really hard. And so for me, you either do something with your hands or a service type of job where you're a personal trainer or plumbing, or you have to learn to code. That's my opinion because I feel like it's still going to put you ahead. Now, what are some of the things that I've been doing in my life that have helped me to navigate many career switches? Because I told you, I was not a software engineer for most of my life. I started learning to code when I was about 35 and I didn't get my first job until 39. From 39 to I'm about to turn 45, my career transitioned through these different points in my life from things that I really enjoy doing. I find that working with other people and building a team is really exciting to me and this is why I want to explore management. I love building apps and sharing how I build them. Some of the stuff that I do here on the channel, I also do it at my work. And I'm also inspiring to start my own agency one day from the experience. And why does this matter? So when I was a young adult, there's many interests I had because I have ADHD. And here's the strategy that I took. I always wanted to teach martial arts, but my mom told me there's never gonna be a business in it. You'll never do it for work. It just won't happen. It doesn't pay the bills. But I still learned martial arts as a hobby. And then I ended up becoming a martial arts instructor for a school. And then I eventually opened up my own martial arts school where 
I worked for myself. And you're saying, well, why is that story even relevant? Well, the reason why it's relevant is because I found what I wanted to do and I looked at it the two different ways. One, I really enjoyed doing it. It was a hobby that I started with. Two, I realized that this is something I could do as work, right? I became a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instructor for somebody else, for somebody else's business. But that same skill that I learned at that job allowed me to open up my own school. So to become self-employed per se. And so when I think of skills that I want to learn, I think of it, do I like it? Number one. Number two, can I get a job working for somebody else? And those things that I learned, can I do it on my own as my own thing? Before doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I actually used to work with my hands. I used to be a mason, basically building things with stone blocks, building patios, building sidewalks. I really enjoy doing it. And again, it's a skill that I learned. I worked for somebody else. And then eventually I was able to take that skill and sell some jobs and have my own clients. So the reason why I say this is whatever you decide to do, what I focus on is Can I do it because I like it? Number two, can I do it as work regardless how much you get paid? Obviously, you want to get base pay where you could support your family. I understand that. And three, can it something I could take and do on the side as my own business? So I try to do things that are in line with work and in line with doing something as my own thing. So that way, if I get fired, I could try to get my own clients based on the skill that I have. And based on the skill that I have, when I get clients, I could use that to maybe get hired another company. I just wanted to share that's how I kind of think about it. I'm not saying everybody needs to do that. But to sum up this video, if you like to code, it's something that you would want to do for fun anyway. There's still a career path in that. And based on the skills that you learn, you could also do some side jobs. I am very excited where AI is coming. I don't think it's going to replace all the developers. And if it gets to a point where it's able to replace all the developers, it's going to replace everybody else. The only people are going to be left are the people that work with their hands. And then one day we'll have robots, robots will be replaced. But from my business experience, and I'll tell you why this matters, most people don't want to do the work. They much rather pay you money to get it done. So programmers, they think about like, if AI could do my job, then I won't have a job. But what they're forgetting is that Yeah, AI might do part of your job. It's not going to do all of your job. You still have to manage the AI process, orchestrate different moving parts together and bring them together. So you'll still have a job. Why? Because nobody else will want to do that. Like if I'm a business owner, I want to work on getting clients. I don't want to focus on building that app, even though it has AI tools that will allow me to do that. I will hire somebody to do that. And so where you spend your time is going to shift, but you're still going to have a job and you still need to be a uh, very good developer because you have to understand the code that AI spits out. So I'm not worried. And if you think about in business, there's three different ways where people fit and make money. And you have to kind of think about this. There's one where you do it yourself. You take a course, you learn a skill, and you do it yourself. You build a thing and you deliver. That takes time. That takes effort. And most people don't want to learn that school skill, regardless if it's programming, regardless if it's learning the AI tools that allow you to build your application. They don't want to do that. So second is done with you, which is a company hires you, you show them the steps, you guide them through the process, and based on what you share with them as a consultant, right? they take those steps and they build that thing. right? And that's another way people uh, make money. And if you think about the last thing, which is done for you, basically you take all the responsibility and you build that thing for the business. You build a thing for the company. You build a thing at the job that you work. Regardless of the tools that you work, most people don't want to spend the time. They much rather pay you money and have the product done. So AI is not going to be self-aware enough to automate everything together where you get everything done. No, you're still going to need developers. You're still going to need people to do that job. So think of the AI tools. They are going to improve your productivity, but they're not going to replace you. With that being said, the job market is tough, and I'm not going to deny that. And this is why I think and why I've always been this way in my life is where I think of learning a skill that allows me to either get hired or do something on the side as a freelancer. So my journey when I started learning to code started with me learning how to build WordPress themes. And I actually started building WordPress themes for my friends, for their websites as a solopreneur, self-employed. But I still continue to learn React because I also wanted to take my development skills and get hired. 
And the game that I play with myself is like, am I going to become more successful as a freelancer or am I going to get hired? Well, I eventually got hired and I continued on that journey working for other people. And now I'm a point in my life where I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could think of something to do on my own. And I have two cool ideas. One idea is an agency that connects other agencies to clients, that brings people together to build cool things. And the second thing, I'm working on a app idea, very specific niche. I'm not gonna share with you because I mean, I don't care if you steal the idea, but I'm still gonna keep it close to my heart. So if it fails miserably, people won't laugh at me, but I'm building an app in a very specific industry that I know kind of well from my previous experience to create an app that makes the user experience to get the thing that they want much better from what's out there. And maybe it'll flop, maybe it doesn't, who knows? But the point is you have things you can do. And I hope this video was inspirational for you. But from my standpoint, to close down this video is learning to code will always serve you well because you'll be ahead of many people that don't. And if you want to use the cool AI tools that allow you to get more done, the more programming you know, the better and faster you'll be able to do those things. I would argue people that do no code are still not as productive as people who do programming and use those low code, low code or no code tools to get things done. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. I just wanted to share this video with you. And uh, if you're new to this channel, uh, thank you. I appreciate all of you. And I'm going to release this video. The next video, I'm going to continue building out my strappy crash course that I've been working on. I think I'm on video nine. I should record that later tonight. But with that being said, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.